This is a 1969 Rediffusion Guildford. If you've never seen or heard of one of these before, uh, you're not alone because I'd never seen one until uh, I saw a picture of this last year and uh, basically I had to have it. So there we are. This is a um, dual standard. Um, anybody familiar with uh, Rank Bush Murphy um, TV should be able to tell you that this is in fact a Bush TV 161 with the A640 chassis. And um, yeah, the problem it has, of course, is the same with all Bush um, <laughs> Bush TVs um, with the dreaded potted line output transformer with tar. Um, I'm going to splice in a couple of pictures of this. Now, uh, what I'm planning on doing with this is um, a tripler conversion. And really, what is that? What that is, is um, you can see I've already removed the... Uh, if I just go in there, you can see uh, there is no overwind now. There's just the inner winding, which is part of the 625 line operation circuit. Um, but yeah, the plan is to add a tripler to this. Now, this is the PL... 504 where about about seven kilovolts comes out of here hence <laughs> so looking at how the high voltage or extra high voltage or eht circuit works um we've got the pl504 that's uh this valve or tube here and uh, from the top of that we get seven kilovolts or seven thousand volts onto the secondary winding. Now, as this is uh, part of the line output transformer, here, the um, this is actually stepped up to um, about 20 odd thousand uh, kilovolts uh, AC, and it, which then is through this rectifier valve down to 19 kilovolts DC, which is then straight to the anode cap of the cathode ray tube. Now, when that works, it works fine, but there's a problem here. You may notice this red bit here, which I've uh, highlighted here, this is actually the winding for the width control, or at least the uh, for the 625 line, which is what we're going to be mainly using on this anyway, for the uh, TV. And um, you'll notice, there's a, you can probably just see there's a, there would be a couple of wires going up the top here. When the insulation breaks down on this, instead of actually going to this rectifier valve, some of the electricity will start to leak to here and then go and then and start to affect the width. So if you've ever seen the width being affected on one of these TVs, you'll know straight away what that is. Um, yeah, and uh, the trouble is, this is just tar, really. And of course, it gets old, it absorbs moisture, um, it melts. In fact, you know, it wasn't even that good at, back in the day at uh, insulating at high voltages. So, um, yeah. So what we're, what we're going to be doing is actually getting rid of this completely. So as you can see with this, instead of having the 7 kilovolts going straight to the line up the transformer, instead it's going to this tripler circuit. Obviously that goes through there and... That generates the uh, 19 kilovolts we need for the CRT. The main thing is it leaves this completely free to um, do its thing. You may find it easier rather than having to, rather than trying to separate the um, inner 22 turn winding for the width of the um, circuit. If you just basically just remove the whole thing and just rewind 22 turns across the core. Um, just using some enamel wire that's all i did and that works fine so i really wouldn't uh it's not even worth trying to extract this is the um tripler circuit so um obviously from the pl504 from uh the cap of uh, this thing which i showed you in the tv earlier that's going to go come from here it's going to go through there and uh, give us well 
should give us uh, 21 kilovolts, but allowing for the voltage drop of these diodes, it'll probably be sort of nearer 19 kilovolts, which is actually what we need. If you want to um, see how these voltage multipliers work, um, there's a really good video, which I'll link down in the description below of uh, EAV blog. And uh, it's a really good uh, description on how these work. So. Uh, So this is the uh, tripler I've made. Um, as you can see, it is just a mains box. But um, yeah, so this wire needs to connect to here. What I may do is just connect it here. Okay, so I've installed it actually inside behind the chassis. Um, not entirely sure that's a good place because of i'm really concerned more the uh, vents getting blocked um i'll i'll worry about that once i've got it uh, working first though okay added it here so that's going directly to the pl504 and the earth connection is just here here i promise i will not do any more Shango 066 impressions in this. And you can see the picture bulb and the vacuum. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to do that. All right. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. So time for power. <laughs> the uh, switch is dodgy in this. So I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just leaving it switched on. So at least I know it's in. I know it's kind of work, working at this moment. So right. I'm kind of putting this off really I'm slightly nervous but uh, okay here it goes so power's going on right power applied nothing's glowing bulbs are glowing I think I can hear the... Oh. Whoa! Holy! Wow! That's almost it! Wow! <laughs> Holy crap! I was not expecting that to work. It's a little bit narrow, but not bad, really, considering. Wow! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> so, microwave oven diodes. Wow. <laughs> Good lord. Alright, okay, let's see if I can stop it rolling.